I'm the project manager of uh, the, what is called the Nordic Interoperability Project, one of the projects with the most complicated names. So for that reason, we, we shorten it to NIP. And it has quite an ambition uh, tagline as well, making cross-border patient and the data mobility the Nordic reality. And I'll come back to that because um, that is, of course, a big, big challenge for anyone of uh, us that is working in the healthcare sector. We know that uh, this is something that we all would like to see, but we also know that it's really difficult to, to achieve. So is this just an impossible dream or not? And uh, I will try to tap into that. Um, it was correct that this is a bottom-up initiative. It was initiated by the industry, the health tech industry, but then very soon uh, joined by other stakeholders as well. Uh, and it came about due to different conferences like the one you are on now, where it's normal to have quite interesting topics uh, on the agenda and also workshops. And uh, the Nordic community often meets at, for instance, HIMSS conferences and have their own Nordic delegation meetings. And in meetings like that, you can you can, you can can get a lot of smart people into the room um, and you can put on the agenda the benefit of, of working cross-national uh, in a region like the Nordics. Uh, and people will happily join into the discussions and, and uh, share their ideas and, and thoughts. And you can get very enthusiastic about what is happening. Uh, and then at the end of the meeting, we all agree that this, this will be really great. And then everyone leaves the room with a positive attitude, but also going back to a national, regional, or local agenda. And then nothing much is happening until they meet again at another conference, saying that wouldn't it be great to work together in the Nordics. So, so that is the background for this initiative, is that the, a lot of the stakeholders got a little bit tired of just talking about this and wanted to do something. And then they started this project uh, in the fall of 2018. And it is supposed to be a Nike-like approach. We are focusing on doing stuff instead of um, just talking or writing reports. And we are, have also focused on inspired by good ideas, wherever they come from, uh, and not being very focused on what invented here. So if there are good ideas or good solutions out there that could benefit this, this Nordic initiative, we are happy to look at them and happy to, to try to implement them into to our work. And this is important for you to understand also when it comes to the initiative that I'm going to present uh, further on. Because I don't want to go deep into the project as such, uh, because that's not a topic for today, but more into the challenges of managing a multinational, multi-sectorial, multi-stakeholder healthcare project and how to do that with success? Or is that even possible? Or is it just a recipe for a headache? Uh, and um, the reason why we do this is also because there's a race towards being the most integrated health region in the world by 2030. So I'll come back to that as well. For this presentation, I normally don't say much about my own background, but for this presentation, I am going to give you a little bit more background of myself, because there's a reason why I was invited into this project, because when they started the project, it was just an idea, it was just thoughts, it was just a lot of the summaries from these uh, Nordic meetings. Uh, and they had an idea that they could draw on a, a whiteboard, and they wanted to make this a reality. And then, of course, you have to be stupid, or at least naive, if you wanted to put it nicely, to jump into a to try to manage a multinational, multi-sectorial, multi-stakeholder project. But my background is that I am, in addition to working in communication and marketing, I am also an entrepreneur in background. So I have built up and sold out and taken exit from a couple of companies. So I have done kind of the travel before or going from an idea on a, on a whiteboard to something that has been realized. So that is also probably one of the reasons why they invited me to a meeting with a whiteboard and just draw an ID on the, on the whiteboard and said, is this something that you would like to do? And then being an entrepreneur in background, but also then naive, uh, that helped to make me say, yeah, that sounds good. Let's do this. But of course, it is a recipe for headaches. So we've had a lot of those. Now, um, one of the reasons why this highly ambitious project could see the, the light of day is also because we had something to lean on. 
Uh, the Nordic Council of Ministers, uh, consistent of the five countries together, they had just before we started the project made a decision that the Nordic should by 2030 be the most integrated and sustainable health region in the world, providing the best possible personal health care for all its citizens. So the ambition for the project wasn't set by us. It was set by the Nordic Council of Ministers. The only thing we did was to adopt that and say that we support that and we want to be one of the followers or one of the first followers supporting that overall very ambitious goal. But of course, a goal like that is important for so many reasons. Of course, it has something to do with the citizens to build a better and safer everyday life for all of us living in the Nord Nordics. But it's also an industry aspect in all of this by building a bigger Nordic home market for the Nordic healthcare industry. So we want to kind of acknowledge that these five countries are quite small, which also makes it quite challenging for startups and other companies to actually look at that as their starting markets or their home market. Uh, but we wanted them to do that. And then breaking down the barriers between this, this region would help them get a, a bigger and better uh, starting point. But we also want, we don't want to deliver just healthcare services to the, to the Nordic population based on Nordic solutions. We want them, of course, to have the best solutions out there. And then, of course, it's, it's important also to make the Nordic markets more attractive for the, the international players. And then, of course, breaking, breaking down these barriers would be one way of doing that. And, of course, we want to have simplified access to health data because one of the, or each of the countries are quite small and also the data lakes and the data sets in each of the countries will very soon be too small for, for modern medicine and modern diagnostics. So we started with the idea and we gathered then when we started doing this in 2019 and before the corona came and stopped the physical meetings, quite a broad specter of uh, stakeholder groups uh, or interested parties that wanted to join into the overall picture and overall ambition of this. Some of them, of course, uh, cause no quite well. Uh, so we had to also address a lot of stakeholders on the outside, but also then make sure that we kept a lot of the stakeholders inside the project also happy and informed and involved uh, to build whatever we wanted to do. Now, <clears throat> I, I say, and I will come back to that, the importance of having a common picture where we want to be. Uh, after the decision was made in 2018 by the Nordic Council of Ministers, there was a really good work being initiated by also the Nordic Innovation, which is under the Nordic Council of Ministers, was a report or a scenario process that was called Nordic Health 2030. And this was trying to build upon the decision of the integrated 2030 and paint a picture of what does it really mean? What, what do we want to achieve? And this report is really nice and uh, it's very detailed. So if you want to have a sleeping pill at night, you can start reading it uh, as a bedtime story. But there's also a management summary that is really interesting. And from that management summary, some of the highlights is that the Nordic healthcare system and the Nordic welfare model is not sustainable. And the reason for that is the same as in the rest of Europe. We are spending all healthcare money on healthcare, or what you could call sick care, and little or nothing on preventative care. So this was addressed in this report and also Focus on that we had to make a shift into more focus on prevention. Uh, and then highlighting then that to make that happen, we had to, to focus on three things. We had to get a new social contract with the individual. So I, as an individual in, in the Nordics, had to be more involved, not only in the care process, but also in preventative care. We had to find new ways of sharing data. And when we talk about sharing data in the healthcare sector, we normally talk about sharing data within the healthcare sector. But in this report, it addressed that that's not enough. We also have to find ways of sharing data within between the individual and the healthcare system. So the individual also had to be a receiver of data, but also a producer of data. And then we also had to find new business models that also rewarded preventative care. So all of these three, new social contract and involvement of the individual, new ways of sharing data between the individual and the healthcare system, uh, and also new business models were kind of the, the essence of this, this report. And in that report, there's a very beautiful double eight that is kind of uh, showcasing the system, the healthcare system as we know it today on one side, the individual on the other side, and the data floating very nicely back and forth. 
And that, of course, is a 2030 vision, because as we know that uh, if we should draw that picture today, the individual would be more or less invisible in that uh, picture. But the NIP project then took this report and the decision made by the Council of Ministers uh, into our hearts and tried to work on that. And we said that let's use this, this overall picture of 2030 and what we would like it to be um, and, and see where we could make a difference. And then one of the initiatives we were starting looking at was the sharing of health data across the five countries uh, and then the health data within the healthcare system. Uh, and there was a lot of reports addressing that problem as well. And of course, interoperability is all about making data available and being able to, to be utilized in different systems. And, and of course, uh, connecting data across the five countries would be great. If we could make that happen by 2030, we would have made a huge progress. But comparing that to the 2030 report, it wouldn't be enough. And for that reason, we started looking, okay, what can we do to get the individuals more involved? And then we started looking at health apps because a lot of us are already using health apps and there are approximately 270 apps defined as health apps on Apple App Store or Google Play that is made available for the Nordics. So, so that is a huge potential if we could dig into that. But currently that is not a regulated market. So we don't know which of the apps that are safe and which are not. And for that reason, that was something that we could start looking into. So based on the focus on, on getting the individuals involved, we said that here we could perhaps cross Nordic make a difference instead of letting them, the national uh, organizations develop five different solutions for this. We could rather start from scratch, all of us, and, uh, and make a cross Nordic solution for health app evaluation and implementation. And that is what then has been named Nordic, and I'll come back to that. And Nordic is, is then a name for the Nordic Digital Health and Medication Project. And the whole starting point is from a patient perspective. We were thinking that, that if an app is safe to use in Helsinki, wouldn't it be fair to say that it's probably also safe in Oslo or in Copenhagen? And with that as a starting point, we said that, well, yeah, probably it would be. So it's better for us to do something across Nordic than, than doing it just national. And the whole Nordic process is meant to be a fast track to a harmonized app accreditation criteria in the Nordic countries. Not excluding Europe, it's just that this is based under the decision made by the Nordic Council of Ministers and be utilizing that decision to, to make things happen. We also wanted this to be a systematic approach to both evaluation of apps, but also implementation of apps. So not just focusing on the framework of, of criteria and stamp of approval, but also looking at in parallel, when we have apps with a stamp of approval, how do we implement them into the healthcare sector in such a way that it benefits everyone the citizens, the healthcare workers, the healthcare organizations, but also the industry. And based on the 2030 aspects, we said that it's not enough just to focus on C marked medical apps. We also had to focus on welfare apps to focus on preventative care. Uh, and then of course, uh, secure then a Nordic wide uh, distribution of approved solutions to create an interesting marketplace for the industry. And given that this is up and running, then it would be the world's first cross-border digital health framework program. And <clears throat> as I said, and I won't try not to go into detail on this, but the, the whole project was built by three, uh, three phases, so three projects. And the first one was, of course, focusing on the evaluation framework and the criteria for evaluation. And this should be built on international frameworks and standards. It should be adjusted to Nordic specific requirements where needed, but also have interoperability requirements built in so that from day one, we had taken into account the sharing of data, the possible sharing of data moving on. And this is, is more focusing on the industry side of the, the equation, because this is for the app developers to go through to get the stamp of approval. And we said that we wanted this to be Nordic specific if it needed to be, but if we wanted to be it have it as close as possible to any international work that has been done so that the app developers in the industry could start in the Nordics, but then move to international uh, markets uh, in the next, uh, next phase. And then we said that it 
doesn't really matter if the app is approved in Finland or in Sweden or in Norway, as long as they're approved by the same requirements and have the stamp of approval, then we have to make sure that they can be distributed across the five countries. And this is then moving outside of the national organization's responsibility or the national authority's responsibility to create a cross-national marketplace. But we think that's important, and we build that upon the decision made by the Nordic Council Ministers of the most integrated health region. And then the third phase of this is then the activation of the approved solutions, so they are not just staying in a warehouse of approved and uh, with a stamp of approval, but actually being taken into use through the uh, Nordic welfare model and the public sector. And that could be either over the counter to directly to the citizens, or it could be on prescription as a, a medical device. So, so this is the systematic thinking, and I won't dig into that in deep, but just for you to understand that this is addressing both the industry side, the cross-national side, but also the, the healthcare side. And as I said, we are building this upon a lot of international frameworks and standards. So we don't want to be Nordic specific more than we have to, but if there are stakeholders that say that we have to have some Nordic specific requirements, fine, we can adjust to that. But as I said, the whole setup of this project is then focusing one side on the industry. So yes, we are cross national, but we also cross, uh, cross sectorial because there's a lot of different sectors that could address into the healthcare sector. So the business development side is being kind of supported and run by the, the ministries of industry. And then you could say that the digital warehouse and, and uh, could be then addressing uh, Ministry of Digitalization, so departments of digitalization in all of these five countries. And then of course, implementation of health apps into the healthcare sector is then addressing the Ministry of Health. And as we all know, it's hard to get stakeholders to work uh, or to put their heads together within a sector or within one political area like uh, healthcare or business or digitalization. And here we would try to have five countries work together, five different political uh, uh, kind of uh, focus areas, uh, and a lot of stakeholders from the industry side and the healthcare side. So a recipe for headache, definitely. I think to, to, to sum it a little bit up, uh, some of the strong points in, in doing this project is the fact that we had a common decision made by the relevant authorities, by the Nordic Council of Ministers, consistent of five national governments have decided that they want this to happen. Now, this decision was made in 2018 and it's allowed to ask yourself who is now given the responsibility to actually see that happening and not just a speech for happy occasions. But they have made the decision and it's a strong point for us that we can turn back to them and say that we haven't made the decisions, you have. The other part that is a strong point in the project is, of course, this 2030 report that gives everyone a clear understanding of the vision and the decision made. So where we would like to be and where we would like this to end up. And that report is not perfect in any way. And I don't think a, a visionary picture of the future does ha have to be perfect, but it has to be in the right direction. So that report is, is at least pointing everyone in the same direction. And then we can discuss whether or not we will land exactly there or it will be a different uh, different uh, picture at the end, but at least we are moving in the same direction. And the whole vision of our Nordic cooperation is very easy to support. So it's easy to join in and say that, yeah, that this sounds good, let's, let's make this happen. And of course, the list of challenges is, is bigger and longer. It is an enormous stakeholder map. It's cross-sector, cross-national, as I've said. So my address book is, uh, and my, the mail list I have is, is just enormous. What, another challenge is also that, yes, working across uh, Nordic and to get better solutions across five countries and get better solutions into the healthcare sector and have the citizen being able to travel into Nordics, have common solutions in the Nordics is everybody's interest but it's no one's responsibility. So it's easy to support, but it's also very easy to say that sounds great, not my responsibility. So to find organizations that actually can stand behind fully, and just in this, as an example, uh, one of the meetings I had was with one of the nation's uh, innovation uh, organizations, 
to see how we could work together. And I had a really nice meeting, a one hour presentation, presented the idea, what we want to do, how did, this would help the national organizations that were within their responsibility. And I ended the meeting by saying, so how can we cooperate? And they said, we can't. You started the meeting with Nordic and not national, and then it's outside our responsibility. So, and then it goes to the point number three, funding. If it's everyone's interest, but nobody's responsibility, who should fund this? Uh, and that is, of course, uh, one of the big hurdles that we have to come across all the time. New trends is absolutely a challenge. We have been focusing in the Nordic project on health apps. And now going to meetings and presentations, everyone is talking about AI instead of health apps. Everyone is talking about the magical four letters EHDS instead of anything else. So EHDS is going to solve it for us, but we don't know what it is. So let's just postpone. So to keep focused on, on an initiative that is now three, four years old uh, is also one of the challenges. So persistence over time is definitely needed to make this uh, this happen. But also the what the Nordics is kind of famous for is then trust. Uh, people and projects like this has to be built on trust. And trust is hard to build, but easy to destroy. Uh, so there's always to take care of that trust into that, but also to make sure that people can trust that this is a great, a good initiative. None of the partners in NIP None of them have really any commercial interest in, in health apps. Very few of them are developing health apps, but they see the greater good of the Nordics and they do it even so. And they also partly fund it even so, and even if it doesn't give them benefit directly. So yes, it is a um, recipe for headaches, but um, it would be fun to succeed as well. So that's probably why we do it.